Hey, what's up, YouTube? Grotha here. So I've been asked a lot of questions on whether or not I was going to make another Spark build for 3.21. I've been making a Spark build update for pa the past few leagues, so I've decided to do it yet again. There is significant change in this league that are worth talking about. Now, Spark is getting a bit of a nerf early on with minus one projectile. This will scale up to the same amount later on, so it's not really like a nerf for the end game. But Spark is also getting a 25% reduced projectile speed nerf. Now this affects us throughout the entire game, and unfortunately this hurts Inquisitor more than it hurts Champion or Trickster. Now this is because Inquisitor has less projectile speed on the tree, but there is a way, there's ways around this, and I'll talk about that in a bit. Now what else has changed in patch 3.21? Let's talk about it. The tree has changed quite a bit actually with the match tree changes, and I want to talk about a couple ones specifically. Now the one that matters the most for us is probably the lucky lightning damage mastery from the lightning mastery. That's getting removed completely, at least from the tree, and this hurts our leveling quite a bit. Now the good news is this is only a leveling problem because we go crit eventually, and that only affected non-crits. So and the endgame build is really good DPS still, and this build is going to be very solid in the endgame. What this does mean is our leveling process is going to be significantly worse. Between that and the Spark Nurse specifically, the leveling will be it'll be worse for sure. We are getting a little bit of power back though, from hits have 25% chance to treat enemy monster res as inverted. This will be a lot worse once we go crit, but early on this will help a lot for the leveling process, and you definitely want to take that early. Speaking of the Inquisitor crit stuff, before I recommended you go Pi's Path and get crit later from like Uber Lab, but nowadays I actually think you probably should just go crit right away whenever you can. This is because Lucky Light Mastery is gone, and it'll be a lot easier to play the build from the beginning as crit. This doesn't mean you should necessarily get inevitable judgment from Pro Lab or anything, but I think getting it from Merc Lab and just going, getting all the crit energy you can as soon as possible and using Crit Strike Shim, this might be the way to go nowadays. So the Evasion Mastery is now gone, the, uh, the Grace Reservation. This isn't really a problem for us, the way we have the build set up right now. But if you did have Mana Reservation issues, you could grab the Mana Mastery, which now has Mana Reservation on it. That's a very good option early on, especially before you go EB Mind Over Matter. This is another thing I changed with the tree. I'll talk about that in a bit when we talk about the gear. But I think we, we want to go EB Mom now. And that's probably the best way to go about this. Yeah, in this place, we have 15% chances to stress spell damage if you have Helmet, Body Armor, Gloves, and Boots that all have Evasion Rating. The Body Armor might be a slight, slight issue. I'll talk about that when we talk about the gear. Um... You can take Instinct as well to help Suppression. Suppression is actually quite easy with this tree. You might be able to drop Instinct eventually as well. Right now having the tree, just for easy Suppression. We lost the uh, the Crit Strike uh, chance on the Mastery as well. This used to have 100% Crit Strike chance. That's gone completely as well, and so like dropping this eventually isn't a big problem. Before, you'd never really want to drop it because that Mastery was really good. So, a little bit of a bittersweet thing. You save points, but the Mastery is good, so that kind of sucks. Now let's get into the projectile speed. How do we fix projectile speed as Inquisitor? Now, I think the best way probably going forward is to go eventually get clusters and get prod speed clusters. Now before that happens, you can probably get away with using faster projectiles in your main links. Now faster projectiles was a link I didn't really talk about too much in the previous videos, but you could probably just map with this and even boss with this in like your 4 or 5 link. This would probably have to replace crit damage or Pierce even, if you got Pierce on the Anoint from the uh, Piercing Shots, or on Gloves, like there's a Glove Implicit for Pierce, or there's also Clusters for Pierce. That could be a way to go nowadays. We'll have to see how it plays out. I'm not sure how bad the Projectile Speed nerf is, but Faster Prod would for sure solve it regardless. Let's see, what else do I want to talk about? Divine Blessing Hate. So I talked about EB Mind Over Matter earlier. The main reason for that is so we can run Divine Blessing. And haste makes your build feel a lot better. Divine Blessing haste is insane. Like you run a lot faster, you cast faster, which is a lot of DPS. The shield charges a lot faster. I can't recommend Divine Blessing haste enough. Now what this means is we're probably going to have to use some energy shield pieces. Like for example, the shield could potentially be an energy shield piece or the chest piece. Now, like I said before, we're taking the Evasion Mastery for Suppression, but the cool thing is, if you craft Evasion on like an armor ES piece, you'll still get the benefit from the Mastery. However, I think the best 
base for this character nowadays would probably be Sacrificial Garb. These are pretty hard to roll though, but like the best in slot would probably be like a really, really well rolled Sacrificial Garb. You can even get Suppression on it, which would let you drop the Insect node like I mentioned earlier. I quickly now go over some of the side effects of running EB Mom. First off, you might notice we're no longer running Glorious Vanity. That's because Glorious Vanity doesn't play well with EB Mom, though unfortunately we kind of have to drop that now. It's still fine. Um, we are also not using Inspiration anymore, and it's place we're using Pinpoint. Pinpoint's actually more DPS anyways, Inspiration was mostly to solve our mana, but if we're using EB Mom, mana is no longer an issue, so we can use Pinpoint with the Caster Mastery, spells which gain intensity have plus one max intensity. It's very good for damage, and definitely a bonus for, for being EB Mom. Another thing to mention is we know we get Arcane Surge, because we're not spending mana, so we can't get Arcane Surge. Fine though, because Arcane Surge got nerfed this patch anyway, so we're not really losing that much. And we have to put increased AoE on our Frost Shield, which is quite nice actually, just in general, to have a bigger Frost Shield. Yeah, let's talk about Champion. So like, this is an Inquisitor Spark build, but I felt like I should mention that Champion Spark is probably still the better build, at least early on for leveling. Now, when I say early on, I mean actually early on, because Champion would like quite a bit on Lucky Lightning Damage. There is a way around that nowadays, though. You can get the amulet for the Esh. The, the new Esh amulet has Lucky Lightning Damage on it. This is quite solid. The problem is this won't be like a League Start item, because it drops off Esh, which is now going to be a higher level boss. And this is also the rarest drop off Esh. So while this is very nice, especially for leveling and for like the Champion and Trickster builds, it's not all it's not it's not gonna be like completely easy to get early on. And also it doesn't have plus level gems or like any of the other good stuff that you normally get on Ambulant. So there's not all upsides in that. Um I think Endgame Inquisitor still has the most damage. You get quite a bit of damage, and you also have a lot more quality of life. So I, I mentioned champion is probably better at League Starter. Champion doesn't have nearly as much quality of life. For example, champion, you have to weapon swap corrupting fever to keep it drilling up. You have to use Divine Blessing and Smite. I'm not using Smite on my Inquisitor build either because we're using a 1 to get more proc speed. And our damage is still better than Champion. Uh, Champion does have one really big thing going for it. The tankiness. Now Inquisitor is definitely nowhere near as tanky as a Champion without gear. Inquisitor can probably get pretty tanky eventually with gear. But early on, Champion is the best ascendancy in the entire game defensively, I think. For most builds. Juggernaut obviously is very strong as well, but... By the way, I li I'm going to link you guys a POV that has a champion tree in it, and I have a bunch of notes. And yeah, you guys take a look at that if you want. And yeah, that's pretty much everything that changed. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll post everything in the description below. I'll put this in my Spark playlist if you guys want to watch the old videos. A lot of relevant information is still in there. I think this build will be a very solid build endgame. Maybe not the best leak starter nowadays, but still very solid.